sometimes the ones in families. Right. And getting people to volunteer is difficult sure. sometimes. I, I'm not advocating it's, right. I'm not so, saying it's bad. I mean, uh, teaching runs in families. <laughs> I, I think the volunteer departments are a very different creature. Okay. So. Well, I, but they're employees. I, and that's why I'm saying it's, it's a whole different world. But if we don't have language that delineates that. Speaking of delineating. I can move along. I'm just saying it sounds like we still have some concerns. All right. Muskegon, uh, the WPT Pedestrian Safety Island. Delineator Safety Island cost estimate of $1,622. Now, I think we were having a discussion in the last one about the signs so and about the tippy things and... Tippy things. So, the last time... I don't know what they're called. So the, last, <laughs> the last time we had a discussion about this, I presented two options. A concrete option, which was approximately $25,000, mm -hmm. and a modular system, which I think was ten. Thousand dollars somewhere around there, um, and then we had um, the, the person from the White Pine Trail who uh, came in, and I was not aware of what he was going to say at the time. Mm -hmm. And he presented um, some emails that he had traded back and forth with somebody else. And in any case, had a good long discussion with him at the meeting, um, and then I sat down with Mr. LaRose and we designed this system. So okay. The delineator, which I think is the the tippy thing. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> so, I got so engrossed in that last conversation. I'll do the heat of What page is that picture on? Uh, 300. Three, I was going to say. Alright. So, uh, the only change I think that probably made from the picture on 300 was the yellow line that you see there instead of being directly across the lane, I'd probably want to see them diagonal. Get kind of sure, sure, sure. Yep. Uh, but, oh, I didn't add it. I did, I did send you guys an email with one that's already been put together and you kind of see how it was put together. I still don't love the idea of not having an elevated surface, um, but I do understand that this is a substantially cheaper way to do things. And, um, it's a change. It's a major change in the community. I think you're going to have people who are upset about it, maybe not with good reason, but they'll be upset about it. Uh, and this is a removable system. If at some point we feel that it's bad for the community, there's public pressure, or if we find we don't like it. That is the thing. Also, it's a nice way to sort of try it out. Yeah. See if it fixes the problem that we feel like we have, if it solves the issue. Easily updatable. Made more permanent, more mm -hmm. substantial. So we we'll bring this back again. So I mean, same thing with uh, uh, what we were talking about in, uh, earlier. I think you can, if you want to, approve it, um, but you don't have to. I think we bring it back again. I would like. I really would like the mayor's input on it, and. Like you said, a big change. So I think we should talk about it a couple times because it is not what we really initially discussed at the last. Plus, there are uh, members of the public, you know, they would right. like some input. Right. That's what I was saying. It's really not what we had on the agenda the last time. So the whole, like, having two discussions on it. All right. Ordinances in the consent. Any other discussion before I cut anybody off? All right. Ordinances in the consent agenda. How do you all feel about ordinances and the consent agenda? So I was asked by a council member to uh, put this on the agenda. Right. <coughs> um, we have to have public hearings on them, don't we? We do. Uh, that doesn't mean that the council has to, to discuss them. Okay. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of ordinances sometimes that we pass that have been so thoroughly discussed previously that, you know, we know what's going on. Sure. I'm not aware of any requirements that they be action items. Um, and of course, I try to, if I were to think that there's going to be discussion or you know, disagreement or, you know, a non-unanimous vote, I would put it in the action But I don't always guess correctly either. 
Um, and that's why it's a prerogative for each council member to take things off consent agendas and put it in action or discussion. So, so listening to someone read that list of numbers is that very highlighted on Excel. Engaging. Right? <laughs> so um, I, I guess I'm just looking for some policy direction, whether a council's okay with it staying in the consent agenda. Uh, sometimes, you know, if I don't think there's any discussion. Or if they think that ordinances by default should always be an action item. Okay, so Strasbourg? I think they should always be an action item. Okay. okay. An action item. I don't have a problem with being in discussion and going right to consent, but uh, if the majority wants action, we can go there too. I, I, think I, see, I see no reason why they can't. And if they had to come back, they could go back to action. But, I think I am probably of the they should always be an action item. They're the kind of thing that impacts citizens greatly, quite often, even if we've discussed them ad nauseum. And I feel like we should have that public record of the discussion and have lots of opportunity for people to weigh in on them. That's my take on it. Does so that give you your feedback? I will present the policy the next time for council to approve. Okay. Community event application modification. We so, keep working on this draft. So I, I'm not sure if we actually changed anything, but we did skip a month about discussing this because uh, I was busy. Uh, it looks a lot better. So you, know, you guys see on your agenda even tonight, you've got five or six community events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, the concert the park that you were given tonight, I was given two days ago. And there's going to be more. Yeah. As the oh, yeah. um, amphitheater opens off and we get our parks more ready yeah. and available and parking lots redone, there's going to be more, which is the thing we we're trying to do. Like, we we're trying to promote that. So now that I have a better idea of the reasoning behind why this originally started, uh, I think I can kind of use this change to do the same things that you guys were intending, uh, giving better uh, advertising to the event. Um, and uh, certain events I think you guys are always going to want to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Rose, can you name one that we might always want to see? <laughs> or there's alcohol service. Yes. Uh, anything that there's alcohol service, probably always the Red Final Festival. Uh, probably anything that involves loud music, so that the community can have a heads up. I should say, or particularly loud music after 9 o'clock. Um, so then I guess the question becomes, we've held some of these events many, many times before. We've had no problems with them, including one with Wild Music. Mm -hmm. um, so is that something that you want the administration to simply approve? That's, I hate to cut you off, Mike, but I thought we determined that once before. Oh, no. It was discussed, and we were going to leave Yes, it was discussed. Huh? Okay. No, but those were for... They may have to come back with a, a means where we could make a determination. Repetitive events. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it the movies in the park or whatever it is, the music in the park Concert or whatever the park. concerts in the park? Things of that nature. Eventually possible repetitive uh, things yes. in the amphitheater. Yeah. Things of that nature. That if they come back year after year. Things at the library. Unless there's a major change in it, yeah, it should be, able, should be able to come in and go right to the city manager. He's fully capable of and very capable of making a determination of whether it's no different now than it was before. Mm -hmm. And it saves time here and everything else in discussion when it's just something that's repetitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, I would love to see it get to that point. We talked about this. Rose and, I, Rose and I, a million years ago, went to the city of Rockford to see how they do theirs. And they, when we were talking about how to structure things with rec flannel and so on, and one of the things they do is their DPW city manager, please go on, sit down um, at the beginning of the year, in like January, with these folks who regularly have an event where they contact them and say, could you submit your paperwork in January? And they put it all on the calendar right at that time. But we have new things. Like new ones can still can, but we're talking about the people that, like Red Flannel. Red Flannel knows in January when Red Flannel's going to be. And 
and the hatchets and the hurt people know, and, you know, the uh, run for life people know, and the, these, what we're talking about, repetitive events that occur again and again, that they have, it doesn't mean that other people can't, but those, and they do them all in that one sweep, and then they have their dates, and they're all, and then they have their calendar, and it goes up on the, sure. the website. So there's two things preventing that from happening here. The first is the council, through their policy, wants to see these community event updates. Okay. And then, we want the consent agenda. At least I'd like it on the packet so we can see it. Okay. Just to see it. But council policy, again, has been to see it twice, which means that they've got to see it two months in advance. Mm -hmm. The first event for this is June 20th. Mm -hmm. It was given to me two days ago. It's sure. not sufficient time to make your, your agenda. Right. So, I was put into a position of this going into your agenda on June 14th for the first time. Mm -hmm. The second time would have been just before the July 18th meeting, meaning they couldn't technically right. use the June 20th meeting. Sure. And that's part of the problem of having it seen twice by the city council. Yeah. The second part of it is the city isn't the one who's failing to present these right. event applications. Right. I didn't... You didn't tell them to not. Yeah, I actually had been in contact with her for over a month asking her to submit this, and it was given to me two days ago. So it was not the city shortcoming. Now, the city has a meeting now, at council suggestion, um, with the Red Lion Festival in about March each year. And then we'll have another one, you know, actually we've been working with them this week about where to put the Grand Lodge. Um, so we've got them kind of trained up right. how things should happen. We've got a lot of different groups, and they don't always submit the information that we'd like when we want it. Yeah. And then it's two month refractory period of the city council. So there's things kind of preventing that. Now now that we're kind of, we've got these, right. maybe it would be a best policy of the city to, in January, contact them and say, hey, we're going to pester you until you actually give us that stuff. I think that's what they do in that That's what she made it sound like. They yeah. actually contact the group that do those things regularly and say, okay, this is our annual meeting. If you, and part of it is, if you want the date at this place, yeah. <laughs> then you need to come commit to it before someone else takes it. <laughs> so it's, it's some of that kind of thing, too, especially as it gets busier and we have more, you know, and I, right, and I don't know how exactly the amphitheater will fit in with that because, you know, I'm not sure who's responsible for that calendar. And we don't know either. Sure. <laughs> so, well, I, I certainly would uh, think that you could handle it. I yeah, know. I'm not, that's not a question. No problem. I just wanted to make sure that, that, that at some point it was put on the packet so we could like see it. So you typically send this information through email, correct? Right. Yeah, we get lots of so emails. Get, right. So we get emails on it. It's just preparing before the meeting. You know what? You know, I don't. I guess we could we could work on a policy where you know he notifies us by email, and if you have a question, you could have it added to the agenda. And we've expedited them all along because we're right. So now we've got another problem, and that is council members don't always check their email when I click them to. Um, so I. I think we're getting better. I, I do have one person who always says thanks, I received it, and I appreciate that, Rose. And I read it. I don't always say I got it. No. So, no. So, so now we're also going to have an open meeting act violation because, you know, are we going to have you guys voting on no, not, something? No, but there's a difference between if we have a policy that, oh, we're fine with it, unless we have a problem, at which point any member can ask at any time to have anything put on the agenda. So this is also not sounding like you don't trust administration just on uh, assessment. No, I'm saying, I'm saying you, we would generally trust you to do it. With the caveat is, if somebody had a problem and you're notifying people of what you're doing, it then comes with communication. you would say, I would like to have a conversation about this at the city council meeting. I just don't see that. No, I'm saying it. I'm saying that's the, I'm saying that's the backstop. So then I then need to send it out on a particular day and say you must respond within five days or it's that's going to be approved? Oh, yeah, because that's problematic. Because then some members are not going to check their email. Oh, right, that's so, problematic. I just what, feel like I trust you. But they're trying to eliminate yes. one situation by creating yeah. another situation. Yeah, yeah. and we had, we had a problem with not you, a city manager, refusing to meet with people about city events. Well, I understand that, but that's the problem we were trying to fix. And I think it's a, you've done a good 
reach out, and I would trust you to approve it. I'd like to add, see it eventually. I don't put it, throw it on the consent of it, a gender or whatever. So what I would probably do is, similar to other things I do, is I'll put it in your communications after it's been approved. Yes. Sure. That way you'd be informed about it every time. And of course,
Gen Zs are not using it so much. In any case, They're part of the problem also arose is it doesn't matter whether we stop tomorrow. We're still obligated to produce records going backwards. Okay, so and that would cost us how much if somebody voided some Facebook page? You gotta go find it. Well, depending on what the courts ordered against us, but it could be up to ten, fifteen thousand bucks. Well, for my two thousand dollars, I would rather buy benches or picnic tables than all this archive stuff. But Facebook, I use it all the time. It's a wonderful thing, but I don't need it to find out what's going on in the city. So lots of people do. If you took down, gear up our our web page. You take down the Facebook page, so many people are going to be upset. I get I get a daily traffic counter for the website. Yeah. Nobody goes to the website. Okay. How many go on our Facebook page? Our Facebook. I don't have access to a counter on the Facebook page, but plenty of people. Mr. Hopkins. If I can put uh, Microsoft in, most businesses they go with Facebook when they do website because their websites cost them uh, more money than what it's worth because a lot of people don't go to the website when they start pulling it up on their phone. Social media is what pops up first. The search is easy, and then that, that's what they do when they look for municipalities and events going on. They don't go to your website; they look for your social media presence. You also just don't. You look like you're not up to date. If you don't have a Facebook page, I mean the school has a Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> you now, know, again, I'd be okay with not having a Facebook page. I really honestly would. But this isn't about having a Facebook page. This is about the best practices of yeah. archiving. Archiving. And oh, how many FOIAs did we get from that? Do you remember? Three hundred and seventeen dollars a month to be on Facebook. I don't know. It's just, it's just well, it's not to be on Facebook. It's to yeah. archive everything that we've ever posted.
we have their minutes in communication, are we talking about them on boards and commissions? Well, I don't think the organization's changed. What's the name has changed? No, we, if you look up here, um, on your communication, Parks and Recreation, April 8th, 2019, Agenda. Mm. Yeah, there might have just been a miscommunication between myself and the person. Okay, because I was going to say, if we're putting them on the agenda under communication, should we, should we put them under department reports? Like, I just felt like it was twice. Yeah, sometimes uh, we collaborate to put the agenda together, and we just want to make sure you got them both. We sure. In several places, keep it. Okay, good enough. And yes, they have a new name. Anything other, except we have the concert from the park, and then the library obviously just told us about, John told us about the summer reading program. Anything else? Anybody? No, I don't think anybody here is on any of the boards. All right, council comments. Mr. Gross. Uh, this is a normal. Thank everybody for everything they do. Uh, I'd like to thank the gentleman sitting down here at the end, who was very quiet tonight. Observe and listen, and I hope he found out what he was here for. So, okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I, just, I would really like to see some progress on the deal with the uh, public events. I, I just think we're covering things over and over and over too many times that we don't need to cover. Okay. That's it. Okay. Ms. Powell. Well, um, Volunteers to plant the flowers and hang the flowers. I don't know who all did the hanging flowers, but they just look wonderful. And um, if it's going to freeze, I'm going to bring some sheets down and cut yeah. up them flowers. I hope it doesn't get that cold. Usually downtown stays a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. but they, and they did a wonderful job, and I really appreciate it. After all these years of looking at those really old flower boxes, it's just a real pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Um, I am actually, Mrs. Powell and I went to an MML training. It was my first one mm -hmm. last weekend in Traverse City at Great One Lodge. <laughs> um, a lot of stuff, but it's very informative and I need a lot more of it. So thankful that I was able to go and do that. Um, I know there's a convention in September that I'm looking at hopefully being able to go to. The one in Detroit? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then also when you guys get your flowers, give Molly and I a call and we'll come and help you plant them. Yeah. All right. Then I would just like to say hooray on the budget. We said that before, but Thank you very much. That is the best budget I have ever seen. And I've seen quite a few, so that's income. And I appreciate the hard work as we continue to try to move forward on this drain. I know it's been complicated, and I am excited about the things that are continuing to roll out. I saw the groundbreaking on the hotel. That's very exciting, and I see the Redbird Bistro is getting ready to open and the um, amphitheater. So just so many things getting built. And a big piece of this has been the manager with the planning commission helping clean up some of our codes to make it easier, more business friendly, and then dealing with some of these things like this drain and getting water and drainage and electrical and so on. So I'm really excited that we are building this kind of thing and that you all are facilitating that as part of our staff. And with that, we are adjourned.